Here we are again. Every day is a learning experience. This is a PWM pulse width modulator. Apparently, modern alternators work off of the computer, and the computer tests the battery to see what the charge of the battery is, its last state of discharge, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a computer pulse width, a compute, and a computer pulse say pulse <laughs> and the computer with pulse width modulation decides how much charge to put in the battery how fast to charge it to make sure that it maintains peak performance whatever whatever so i'm going to install one of these i've looked at some videos on installing these and i've seen some real nice uh installations into the dash i've seen some quick uh, shots of wiring diagrams I'm going to kind of lay this thing out like right here where you can see all the wires, what the wires actually go to, and I'm going to play with it a little bit and see how we change charge rates and things like this. So what I've got to work with over here is this is the original plug for the LS4 alternator. This is the plug that was for the alternator that was on the truck. It's a three-wire plug, but I'm just going to use this plug. I will probably pull these wires out of this wiring harness because I'm going to just run these all the way to the front of the car, completely separate from the wiring harness. The one question that I have come up with for myself is making sure that it powers on and off with the key so that the alternator is completely dead, uh, doesn't drain the battery, that kind of stuff. But we'll approach that problem when we get to it. For right now, I'm just going to wire the PWM in and see if I can get this alternator charging on it. So when the key cuts off, that cuts off the 5 volt supply to the PWM and that seems to cut everything off. So I don't think you'll need any additional switching. So what I'm going to do now is wire this thing up. I'm going to try to use some brightly colored wires so they're easy to see on the camera which wires are going where. Uh, I'm going to insert some wiring diagrams right about here. This is what I used for powers, grounds, and where I ran the wires to. And also the colors of wires that I used in my temporary wiring harness. I'll put links in the video description below for the things that I used and my sources. This is a photo of my wires at the PWM end of the wires. This is my pink wire picking up 5 volts off of the PCM. This is coming from a connector that I've wired into the harness. Some more temporary wiring. This is where I picked up the ground from the PCM. This is just twisted onto a ground wire that I had previously cut off. Probably a wire that went to a rear O2 sensor or something like that. And this is where it goes into the L-terminal. The L-terminal wire happens to be orange in the original wiring harness. Incidentally, this is the second one of these that I ordered. Well, I had to reorder it. The uh, seller was nice enough to replace it because the U.S. Postal Service delivered this one in this condition. Yeah, they just stuck it in the mailbox with a box that looked like that. She's in great shape. Thank you, Uncle Sam's Postal Service. Because I had the entire wiring harness out of the Impala anyway, I took the time to strip it down, so I've got lots of different colors of wire that I can use for this project, or any other project. All right, I have the wires hooked up according to what the interweb says. Uh, I got ground to the ECU ground, uh, PCM ground. On the PWM, I've got 5 volt reference voltage hooked to it, and I have the orange wire running to terminal L on my alternator. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. Luckily, it's a windy day today, so I'll have plenty of airflow in here. I may not die from asphyxiation. Still don't have a key. Well, I mean, I got a key, but I'm not using it. Not too bad considering it hasn't started for like four days. Hey, you're missing one thing. <laughs> ah, all right, it's another one of these. You got to see this to believe it. You're missing one thing. All right, you got your PWM hooked up to your ECU and all that voltage and stuff like that, but you don't have a wire from your alternator 
to your battery so your voltage isn't going to change. All right, hold on. Be right back. And there I was. You can imagine my surprise when after I started it up, the voltage went down at the battery. Hmm. Well, a Toyota Celica starter cable has volunteered to do the temporary part of alternator wire this time. So if we get this nut tightened up, it might work this time. All right, here we go. This time you'll be the first to know if it works. I'll be second to know. And at this point I reach the moment of truth. If everything's wired up right, as I adjust the percentage up and down, the charge voltage will go up and down proportional to the percentage, we hope. Also, the PWM frequency needs to be set to 128. That's done with the arrow keys on the left. Very simple to do. Now, was it recording? Yes, it was recording, all right. All right, one more thing done. Well, it's not actually done, but the hard part of it's done as far as I'm concerned. I know that it works. I know how to make it work. Now I just gotta finish wiring that uh, body connector down in the car to run all the way to the front, make something to mount this in the dash, and we'll be good to go. But at least we know it charges. I got a way to charge the battery. I can regulate the voltage, that's pretty cool. And I'll have one more little display on the dash. This thing's going to start looking like a time machine or something soon. All right. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.